Well, welcome to our course on plural noun propositions. These are absolutely the uh, essential cornerstones of uh, so many papers, so many assignments, uh, and really even the, uh, the, the backdrop of almost everything that we do because the way we approach our, our, our learning is by going through the process, uh, at least in the structure of developing a plural noun proposition. And so today we're focusing on how to prepare uh, the body of the paper. Uh, we've, we've already learned that, you know, the, the steps that we've taken are, you know, you, you got to start with brainstorming ideas. You got to determine what the proposition of your paper is. You got to compose the, the outline, you know, the bones, the structure of your paper. And today what we want to focus on is the actual preparing of the body for your paper. And so we've used the example of, well, what are your four favorite movies, right? What are your four favorite movies? We've already brainstormed. We, we threw out different ideas, uh, you know, and even broke them down into genres, classical mu movies, uh, dramas, uh, sports, action movies. And so I came up with Ben-Hur, It's a Wonderful Life, The Ultimate Gift, and Rocky. That was what I came out with my brainstorming. Uh, then I started preparing the body, came up with my proposition statements. Um, what I did was I, I then went away from my brainstorming paper that would have all kinds of scribbles and uh, different titles and names and all kinds of, it, it's, it's a draft, right? And now, as you see here, it's very clear. I want to be able to see, I want to be able to see what the proposition statement is. What are your four favorite movies? And I want to see what they are. That way I can stay on track, right? Then what I did was in, in my process, I went from four to three. And, and the reason why is I said, well, you know what? Uh, the ultimate gift and it's a wonderful life are really uh, very similar in the same genre and even kind of uh, similar in uh, the type of the movie that they are. And so I just uh, went down to Ben-Hur, It's a Wonderful Life, and then Rocky. And that was the original question that we uh, had stated anyway, was what are your three favorite movies? And so my proposition statement then is what are your favorite three favorite movies? My three favorite movies are Ben-Hur, It's a Wonderful Life, and Rocky. As we prepare the body, right, the body of the paragraph, the very first paragraph that we're doing is an introduction, right? This is also known as a topic paragraph or the opening thesis, opening thesis statement, uh, depending on you know what teacher you have, they, they use different terms. But the, the first paragraph of your paper is an introduction. Uh, this is the paragraph that should clearly articulate what your paper is about. If you read that first paragraph and you don't know what the paper is about or your paper isn't about the first paragraph. I went to the beach this summer in Los Angeles, had a great time at Santa Monica. It was so much fun. Uh, you know, I also got a chance to uh, go watch USC football because USC has the best football program in the nation. Well, the proposition of my paper is USC has the best football program in the nation. Well, what does going to the beach have to do with that? See how I'm confusing the reader. I'm, 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 and, and so eliminate that whole thing. And right away in the beginning is, look, I want to talk to you about USC football and why it's so great. Make sense? So in the preparation of the body of our paragraph, we want to develop then an introduction paragraph, which then is going to lay out in that intro paragraph, it lays out what your plural noun proposition statements are. And so the question is, what are your three favorite movies? The explanation then of my three favorite movies is what's gonna come out in my introduction. And so my thesis statement is first, right? My three favorite movies are, okay? Then my, my, my proposition statement. My proposition statement then is going to uh, either clarify or support what my actual uh, paper is going to be about. So, <clears throat> sentence one looks like this. I enjoy movies with heart that inspire me. Okay? So, I, I begin my paragraph 
by talking about movies because that's what we're talking about but but i added a little bit more i personalized it because the question was what movies do i like so i'm trying to let the reader know i enjoy movies and then i wanted to give a a presupposition to my uh, to my movie list because there's a lot of different movies that we probably all like I could have said my three favorite action movies I could have said my three favorite sports movies but instead I chose with this this theme of kind of uh, the heart the heart that it, the movies that inspire me okay movies that inspire me and so my three favorite movies that inspire me, right? Not just my three favorite movies, but my three favorite movies that inspire me are Ben-Hur, It's an Epic Journey About Faith, Friendship, and Family, Sense 4, It's a Wonderful Life, It's a Powerful Tale of One Man's uh, Contribution to His Community, and then the fifth sentence, Rocky is a Heartwarming Story of a Loser's Opportunity to Change. And so we see in my first, second, third, fourth, and fifth sentence, that's going to make up the body of my introduction paragraph. I can always go deeper. I can always add uh, another sentence. I can have four points, five points. But you can see how clear and concise and crisp this is. And for the nature of this class, all we're trying to do is, is to practice the the basics of developing a plural noun proposition paper. And in, in this section, we're talking about uh, preparing the actual body of the paragraph. So what, are, what, are, what is the format? What's the structure? Well, the body paragraphs support your proposition, right? You have a proposition. Uh, my proposition here is these are the movies that inspire me. <laughs> uh, so my first sentence is going to relate to the reasons given. So the reasons given why they inspire me, well, all we have to do is go back. And so if we take a look at, at Ben-Hur, why does Ben-Hur inspire me? Because it's an epic journey about faith, friendships, and family. That's why I'm inspired. And so my supporting statements will be about faith, friendships, and family that were displayed in the movie Ben-Hur. It's a wonderful life. My supporting sentence is it's one man's contribution to his community. So I'm going to write about how George Bailey contributed to his community. The third uh, plural noun proposition is Rocky. It's a heartwarming story of a loser's opportunity to change. So I'm, I'm not really talking about boxing. I'm talking about the, the heartwarming story of the movie Rocky and how he goes from being a loser and not necessarily to a winner. Um, I'm not going to give away the end, but... Uh, but he changes and we get to see that journey. And so, again, uh, when we're looking at the body of the paragraph, we have these sentences that are going to relate to the reasons given, right? So I just gave you the reasons. We're going to have the supporting statements or comments or facts that support those reasons that I gave. Uh, why or how this reason applies to the topic? Uh, how does it relate to me? Uh, how does it relate to you? Uh, an explanation? perhaps, of how this works, because uh, we're writing all kinds of different papers. It's not always just about movies. And then is there a benefit to me or others? So these are some of the questions that you may ask to help support your main uh, plural noun proposition. Uh, these are just some samples given that, that you can use. So the body of your message will consist of uh, the points of your, your homiletical outline and the meat that you put on the skeleton. So your outline, your basic outline, you know, heading, subheading. That's just bones, right? That's just an empty skeleton. Now we gotta put some meat on there. We gotta add some spice, okay? It's like, make, make me interested. You, you said, what are, what are three favorite movies? That doesn't do anything for me. Even if you said, what are your three favorite movies? Ben Hurts, Wonderful Life, Rocky. Okay, good for you. But in saying, Rocky, it's it's a heartwarming story of a loser's journey, right, to to better. Uh, that what, what do you mean by that? What what, what is that? What do, what do you mean? It's Ben Hur's about faith and uh, and and family. What, what what does that mean? Ooh, I'm, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm interested. Or George Bailey, his contribution to his community. What contribution? To it? Tell me more. So that's what we're trying to do with each of these points of our outline. 
uh, we're, we're trying to draw out uh, components. So what are those components? Well, the way we can look at it in, in the preparation of our body, are we, we, want to, we need to explain things, we need to illustrate things, and we need to apply. We need to draw application. So what are we talking about? Well, when we make an argument or we make a statement, there, there needs to be a, an explanation. You, you need to, to emphasize your point, right? And so this, this really is what puts, puts meat on, on the skeleton of your outline. So if you're telling me that your favorite movie uh, is Spider-Man, well, you're going to have to emphasize your point, right? Well, you're going to have to, and, and you say, well, I, I love Spider-Man because uh, he's, he's an amazing teenage crime fighter, okay? Well, define your words. What do you mean he's amazing? What's amazing about him? Well, he's amazing because he has spider-like strength, right? Spiders have strength that's beyond their size. He has spider-like reflexes, spidey reflexes, and he uh, can use his, his spider webs almost as if he's flying to go from building to building. So I'm defining what I mean by amazing, right? Uh, I'm going to have to explain key phrases, uh, spidey senses maybe. Uh, I can use cinnamon, synonyms in, uh, in my explanations uh, to emphasize or highlight key words that, that maybe I'm using, you know, amazing. Well, can you, what's another word for amazing? Because maybe the hyperbole is, you know, you're going to get lost in that. I can simplify difficult concepts. Sometimes we're reading or reporting on a on something, and they're using really big words, right? And heck, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm just 14, so it's okay. Take that big word that they're using and bring it down to your level, something that you understand, and maybe the other readers uh, would understand uh, as well. Major on major points, okay? If if you're doing a report, if you're doing a review major on the major point that's like i can't emphasize that enough sometimes we're writing a paper and or we're doing a review or a report and it's like that's not really the main point of, of of the movie you know we're writing a report on animal farm and you're getting hung up because you know pigs talk it's like yeah pigs talk it's anthropomorphism it's it's the way the the, the, the book is written, but that's not really the point of the movie, right? Um, discuss illustrations. Um, just leave out what's what's not meaningful or, or especially in supporting uh, your paper. Uh, you probably don't want to, you don't have to bring up everything. Use language that's simple and clear. Uh, that'll help you to explain. I always go from, I, I start from the most basic simple explanation. I, that's part of what I use in my brainstorming. It's part of what I use in my notes and my drafting is I just say it how I want to say it. I, I write it down and I write it as simply in, in the simplest form that, that I can I can write it. And then I will uh, look to maybe a, a explain a little bit deeper. But sometimes keeping it uh, short and sweet and clear is the, is the best way. Uh, short sentences are better than long ones. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we just have run off, run on after run on after run on sentences. And by the time you start the sentence and end the sentence, the reader has no idea what you're talking about. Use familiar vocabulary. I know sometimes we, uh, you know, want to break out that the thesaurus, but let's be honest. Is that a term? Is that a term that we uh, that we commonly use today. I remember I, you know, as a baseball player and I was a catcher and it was very common as, you know, two catchers are sitting side by side as we're, we're catching the pitchers. And, you know, you're only like six feet away from the guy, so you're talking. And I remember the, you know, this guy next to me always had the college word of the day. And one day we were catching and it was kind of raining and there was a mud pile. And he's like, wow, we're really in a quagmire. It's like... You know, most 14 year olds don't know what a quagmire is, so it's 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 not a, a familiar vocabulary. You should just say, hey, it's muddy here, right? Makes sense. Or I'm a voracious reader. I think we probably understand what that means, but it's probably better to just say, you know, I read a lot. Okay. Uh, clarify the meaning 
um, by way of contrast. Uh, that's always a good a good way to to you know make something that maybe isn't easy to understand clear by contrasting it with something else, which leads me to my next point, which is uh, illustrating. So we can use illustrations to contrast, right? We can use illustrations uh, to make abstract concepts easier to understand. Uh, so sometimes things are, are, are complicated and we say, well, let me, let me illustrate it this way, right? Um, it turns the, the hearer's ears uh, into eyes, right? So, so it turns their ears and eyes. What does that mean? It means that it allows them to see what you see. You see something so, so clear, so clear. Um, but you're having a hard time explaining it. So it's like, so, so you say, well, th th this is like a, th th this is like, you know, at the end when something happens really, really good, but then it, it, it gets like even better. And so, um, it's the cherry on the top. It's like, okay, now I got it. I get it now. I get it. Um, illustration should be designed to move your hearers, uh, from something again, that's abstract. That's, that's th think of it as like cloudy or hazy to concrete, to clear. So, so the invisible becomes visible, right? The unknown becomes known. We're, we're writing these papers to to clearly articulate our position, our point of view, or our summary of what we've just watched or listened to. So we're not trying to be uh, obscure and tricky. We're actually trying to be very, very deliberate in our in our papers. <clears throat> Illustrations, um, you know, where do we get them? Right? Uh, where where do we find them? Well, you look. You can borrow. Uh, illustrations. I mean, most illustrations are actually commonly known, right? Everybody knows cherry on the top kind of a thing. Uh, but they can be personal experiences. They can be from articles or books or magazines. That's why we cite. That's why if, you know, if you're, if you're borrowing from somebody else's work, then just let us know. That's not a problem. You know, if you're quoting from another person's book, just say, Hey, you know, quoting Robert Frost. Um, as Tony Jamie said, it's perfectly fine to quote somebody else. You just have to give them credit. That's good research. If you steal from somebody else their thought and their idea, then that's plagiarism. Okay, we want to be very careful not to do that. We can illustrate from TVs or movies or plays. Some of the you know very very famous uh, TV shows or, or movies or. Or, or plays that are, are quoted so much that it's like it be, it's become common vernacular in in the English language, and so we will say things like that all the time and, and use them. Historical accounts you can use a historical account as a illustration to support your your paper. Scripture. A lot of times we're we're trying to let's say we're we're talking about uh, the way you should respond, right? So we're evaluating something political we're, we're looking at abortion we're looking at a border wall we're looking at uh the homeless and feeding the homeless and it's like well let me illustrate what the heart of the lord was and then you give an example of the good samaritan or how jesus fed four thousand people uh, kind of a thing that we use illustration that way famous quotes heck you can even use your imagination and come up with your own illustration altogether uh Third aspect of preparing the body of your paper and, and really putting that meat, right? Putting that juicy, tasty meat on the bones. Application. Uh, br bring meaning that, that will bring impact uh, to people's lives. So if, if I'm speaking to you right now, we're talking about plural noun proposition papers. And you're thinking, I, I, who cares? I'm just taking the class. No, you know what the value is to you? See how... Things change when, 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 when I put an emphasis, I lean forward, I point, I say you. Now, this is how you can apply plural noun proposition to your life forever. This is how you can apply it in sports. This is how you can apply it in music. This is how you can apply it while texting. This is how you're going to apply it at grad school. This is how you're going to apply it 
when you work. This is how you can apply it when you ask a girl out on a date. Okay, now you've brought reason for me to, to listen or to read the paper because there's going to be an application that's going to going to exhort me to action. It's a call to action, right? We're calling you to action. And so we, you know, we're, we're asking to, you know, obey. We're asking to apply. We're asking you to, to take the wisdom. And that's most of our classes. We're trying to get you to use your critical thinking skills to draw out of an article, to draw out of something that you've seen or heard and say, okay, these are three ways that I can apply this to my life so that I can get a job, so that I can have a great career, so that I can have a great life, so that I can honor my God, okay? Application becomes very, very important. So, <clears throat> you know, when, when you finish writing the body, when you finish kind of putting this meat on there, and sometimes we get carried away and we, we, we put too much meat. So we kind of have like, you know, all right, we want a guy and we want to add some muscle to him, right? But then he's got so many muscles that he just looks like a big, you know, hulking muscle head. It's like, no, we, 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 when we finish the body of the message, we want to ask ourselves some questions. We want to be honest. Remember, up to this point, these are all rough drafts. You're brainstorming. They're rough drafts. You're, you're, you're just kind of, you know, determining the proposition. It's a rough draft. You're, you're setting up your outline. It's a rough draft. You're composing the body. You're preparing the body. It's a rough draft. It's still a rough draft. So you're asking yourself questions. Have I clearly explained each point? H have I explained each point? Uh, have I adequately illustrated uh, each point? H have, have I made it clear? Have I carefully applied each point? These are just some questions that you can, can ask. And you say, if I have a proposition, if I'm stating that this is my favorite movie and this is the reason why uh, it has heart, well, did I actually... Uh, give supporting evidence to support that that argument. Just keep in mind. Finally, w w without uh, w without the body, w w there's no there's there's or, or the meat. Without the meat to the skeleton, then there's no body. Without the meat, there's no body. Um, without the meat to your argument or your conversation. There's no point. Unfortunately, today, we live in a postmodern world, and the postmodern world says, well, you know, you believe whatever you want to believe. You have your opinions, I have my opinions. There is no absolute truth. Of course, they're the ones arguing and yelling at you to believe what, they, what you should believe, just like them. Uh, we see it in this, in this way. You know, maybe you'll hear something like, Donald Trump is a racist. Okay, there's your proposition. Donald Trump is a racist. There's three reasons why Donald Trump is a racist. One, two, three, right? There's a plural noun proposition right there. But if you can't give an argument, and this is what we see every day in, in, in a lot of different aspects. I'm just using this. But if you can't say, well, here, here's three reasons. Here's my, my three reasons are X, Y, and Z. Here's my supporting facts for X, Y, and Z. Here's how I can illustrate X, Y, and Z. Here's how I can support X, Y, and Z. Well, if you can't do that, well, then you haven't adequately put the right meat on the bones. You, you just have an empty skeleton. And so today, one of the biggest problems that we face in America because of postmodern thinking is that people believe that just having a random opinion actually is a good thing. So just because you have an answer to a question, it means you have the right answer. And that is, is what we're trying to help develop in your mind, in your critical thinking, and why we want to draw out the plural noun proposition so that you just support your position, your view, and the facts. And so we look forward to the next episode in our plural noun proposition papers.